welcome hey. to day three of Educator Innovation Week, a week where we at Flipgrid spend time celebrating, amplifying educator ideas, supporting you, and thinking about innovation in the classroom and beyond. My name is Jornay Armand, and I am one of your Educator Innovation Leads on Team Flipgrid. And today, we are here to discuss diversity and inclusion. Yesterday, we learned how important it is if you know someone's story, you really understand a little bit more about them. And that really leads into our conversation today. So first and foremost, I would love to introduce you to our facilitator and moderator of our conversation today, Manny Curio. He is a passionate educator and a very charismatic one, as you can see, who is a technology specialist from SciFair ISD. He was a bilingual teacher who really helped form the foundation for many first, second, and third grade students. He really believes that connections with students and their families comes before the curriculum. So please help me welcome Manny Curio. Hey! <laughs> it's true, like, even though I work for a curriculum now, I always remember when I watched that tech talk from Rita Pearson, it says that no one learns from someone you don't like. So it's like it's really important to build a, a, a community that, that encourages um, students and, and, and parents to be involved in the learning because otherwise there's no learning happening. <laughs> but enough about me. We have three amazing people. Like the more research I did, I'm like, oh my gosh, well, no wonder why they're here. <laughs> so the first one, we have Nari Clark. She is an educator in Southern. Oh, I cut that. Whoops. I don't be that, that's not sorry. In the Southern, I think it was California, right? She is a curriculum program specialist for technology in the Colton Joint Unified School District. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. <laughs> 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 she has some unique experiences. When I was listening to her podcast, she had to be bussed out to from her neighborhood. Oh my goodness, I'm like, what? So she was bussed into a predominantly Caucasian school. I can only imagine how you will feel. So that is diversity right there. We have yeah. Ramesh, which we're wearing matching shirts. We're That's both right. flipping board members. Hashtag, yeah. twin, twinning. Hashtag twinning. Right? <laughs> He's an associate professor of biology at Donate University in Nebraska. Wow. Professor. Yeah, right in the middle of the country. The university is super diverse. I can only imagine mm -hmm. the stories that you have. She has spearheaded a science communication project called the 1000 STEM Women Project. And there is going to be a link in the chat. Correct? Yay! And last but not least, <laughs> Mary Alice Curran. Oh, she's the founder and CEO of the Digital Citizenship, as you can see in the background, Institute. She's I'm a Right? <laughs> she wrote a book, The Ditch Sit Kids. She's a mother and she has connected educators that has served as an associate professor, middle school teacher, principal, and a library media specialist. You are like full of surprises. Lots of hats, lots of right? hats. I was like, wow. So look at this. We have such a diverse panel with so many experiences. This is just going to be amazing. Absolutely. And, you know, it's really our differences. It's not our differences really that divide us. Um, it's really our inability, I guess, to really recognize, accept and celebrate those differences. Mm -hmm. That's right. So creating, supporting a community in our classrooms allow us to support, interact and share experiences with one another. It really gives a deeper sense of belonging. So this is going to lead into our first question. How do you foster a sense of community while celebrating diversity and inclusion in your learning environment? Do we just jump in? Yeah. Jump in. All right. All right. I'll, I'll go first. Um, so one way that you can do this is by really getting to know your students at the very beginning of the school year. Uh, we have a teacher in our district, Yvette Mazzanato, that creates a Flipgrid and she allows the students to actually share what they're doing um, and share their cultures, share their experiences so that each of the kids can actually learn from each other. And then at the end of that Flipgrid, my suggestion would be to have the students watch each other's 
and then write a letter to that friend that expresses what is your strength that you saw in that person and how their strength can actually impact you. So an example would be like I have my work partner, Carrie Northcott, she has many strengths that are not the same as mine. I can write that letter to her expressing I love the way that you are so uh, thoughtful in your emails to to staff and letting her know that when I see that in her, it helps to build that in me as well. So really creating that community within your students by allowing them to get to know each other and to celebrate their cultures and things that make them different and unique. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, so at the, at the college level, by the way, I'm stealing that idea, uh, but at the college <laughs> level, um, I get to, I, I have my students um, before the semester starts, I play two truths and a lie with them. Uh, so they get to know me. Uh, they also get to know how to use Flipgrid. They, know under, they learn the mechanics of Flipgrid. But I do that and I have them play two truths and a lie um, uh, with each other because I want them to bring their whole selves to the classroom. And so for example, um, you know, I don't want them seeing me just as a biology professor. I want them seeing me as a person who has a set of experiences that go, that happened before I was a bi biology professor. Um, and, you know, so for example, one of the, one of the truths that they often think is a lie is like, I have two tattoos. And what that does is it shifts their perception of, well, this guy's a science professor. So why would he have tattoos? Um, and so encouraging them to bring all parts of themselves to the classroom is how I try to build community. And, and initially through Flipgrid when they are, especially now in, in this moment, um, tools like Flipgrid are gonna be in, integral to having students make connections um, in a way that they might not be able to make face-to-face -face in, in, a, in a shared classroom space. Oh, wow. Ramesh, that is incredible. When you said that I want my students to bring their whole self to the classroom, it's creating that safe space for students. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we're not comfortable, we hide certain aspects of ourselves. And by educators being um, open and also vulnerable, it also really invites the students in. So Mary Alice, I know you work with educators around the world. What's your yeah. take on this? Oh my gosh. Well, I am an untraditional learner. And for over 30 years of my life, I tried to hide my dyslexia. The fact that I just, I learned differently. I was a failure in a traditional classroom. And I can tell you the first time I ever joined, this is, you know, probably, I don't know if it was 2016, 2017, but early on for Flipgrid. And I was listening to a webinar and I heard Charlie, like I, you know, you're watching a webinar and I'm talking to the webinar as if Charlie could hear me, like as if everyone could hear me because I was crying as he was describing the importance of student voice that went beyond the spoken voice. So I'm an untraditional learner. My husband is deaf. We are in like an untraditional family of learners, right? And now just what I've experienced even pre-COVID, but specifically during COVID about the importance of like accessibility that when we are content creators, that everyone has access to bring their authentic self um, and to know that the type of learner that I am, I am actually able to amplify that. Um, I have said that I love Flipgrid as a platform, but it's beyond a platform. It's a community. And that to me is really um, in a roundabout way why I am so happy to be joining this conversation today um, because it is about inviting everyone not just some students, but all students and the things that make us different. Um, there's so many things that make us the same about being human, but the things that make us different is the best part about the human race. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jernay, mm -hmm. can, I, can I piggyback on that? Yeah. Um, you know, when you said that, it just made me think of this grid. How amazing would it be if we sent a topic to our parents? 
moderated topic to our parents and ask them to share their culture and to share their area of expertise. So when we do that, we it's so much easier to integrate them at, into our curriculum. Where can we put uh, those family members right into the curriculum and make them a part of our community? Also elevating that, that sense of ownership and pride that they have in getting involved in that class and mm -hmm. how proud their students would be as well, but actually really getting our parents to get involved by um, having that flipgrid topic that's moderated so you can you make sure it's you know appropriate for all but then having that shared community as well i just love that i thought about that as you mentioned that too you know and i'm even thinking for our back to school the rethink learning summit that happened a few weeks ago with nicole taylor there was someone t sharing about the importance of like knowing your name how to pronounce names mm -hmm. um and the fact to like kick off a school year with a flip grid that not only because my name is spelt with an i and unfortunately people see maria and they see lice. They don't know how to pronounce my name. And yep. nobody wants to be associated with lice. Let me just tell you <laughs> that, no matter how old you are. But that idea of like owning who you are, uh, embracing all the things that make us the same and make us different, our culture, our tradition, our learning styles, just a wonderful way to kick off a school year mm -hmm. and build that sense of community. Absolutely. This is just awesome. I love what Nari was saying. Like sharing what I've learned from somebody else and just Flipper makes it so much easier to, to create that. And you have accessibility, you have the, um, the immersive reader, you have closed captioning. It is like, everything is in there. Love it. Right. it all those walls are torn down. <laughs> I'm all, all for walls. people learning from each other. That yeah. is just amazing. It, it makes you feel like you belong and you're needed in there because Ah, you know, and those kids work harder because they feel that they're needed by another student. And it's just, just amazing what, what happens. And I, think, I hate know, to use the Boston example, but like Cheers, like everybody knows your name. Like I, well, the thing that I love about Cheers is like if you weren't at that bar, right? and you were missing, somebody noticed. That's the same thing when you were just talking about immersive reader, mm -hmm. when you're talking about closed captions, like everybody's welcome. Everybody has a seat at that table and I can bring my best self. I just, yeah. I, I love, love it. it. I love the accessibilities that you've built in with people that may not like to video because, you know, as an adult learner, sometimes someone's asking you to do a flip grid at 10 o'clock at night, you're, you're bed close time, you know, so, but you still want to contribute. So having that blackboard up, oh my goodness. And learning how to change it into a podcast was so, um, it, it was impactful for us and to the students. So now when I have a student that doesn't want to be seen, I can say, I, I have a, I have a way for you to be involved I have a way for you to share your voice you know and it's just tearing that down and sometimes I even think that it's so even more powerful just to hear the voice you know the emotion that comes with that to to strip away some of that visualness um, it, it has been really impactful for our students so it was it allowed me to grab more kids and make them feel safe in the space as well as adults that didn't want to be seen too and, yeah. and eventually they open up and then they remove that filter and then they show their face. Right. It Absolutely. All the time with my students <laughs> and with my teachers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and there's so much there's so much you can infer from tone that you yes. wouldn't get in a written response. Um, so in my in my classes, I I used to use discussion, you know, sort of traditional discussion boards. And I've just gotten rid of them because the thing that I found, yeah, I know, I know, trust me, I think back and I'm like, oh God, why would I even do that? But, um, you know, the thing that I found with tone is I get to capture authentic student voice, but I also get to capture the backspace moments. And what I mean by that is if I'm writing a response and I have a miscue in my thinking, I would, I would never, I as the instructor, as the educator would never see that moment because the student would just backspace the words and correct it. But through video and through audio, I get to see them self-correct or I get to hear them yes. self-correct. And when I see them, and what, what that allows for is I get to identify the variety of, mis if there are a variety of misconceptions across my student group, you know, if there's, or if there's a repeated trip up, I need to go back and address that the next class period. Um, mm -hmm. And I would never see that in a written format. I would only, you know, experience that moment those backspace moments through this audio format, for yeah. sure. And that, again, brings 
I think that keeps, um, that allows, and I, I think that builds in inclusivity because it allows students, Flipgrid is a platform that allows for mistakes to happen, right? And it allows those mistakes to not be shamed. It allows those mistakes to be used as a springboard for stronger and better learning mm -hmm. for the entire community, right? Because there's gonna be a kid, there's gonna be a student who hears that mistake and is like, oh, I, I made that mistake too. And now immediately that student doesn't feel isolated in their misconception, right? Um, so it's not only a benefit for me as an educator, it's a benefit for every student in that classroom. <laughs> That's a really awesome point, Ramesh. And Manny and I were talking the other day, and we actually were talking about the Trolls movie. Um, and we brought up a really cool quote. Manny, well, how about you share that quote with us? So, you know, I'm a kid, <laughs> and uh, Jordan was sharing deep, deep quotes. I'm like, mm, I have a Trolls quote. <laughs> <laughs> because when I was a teacher, I always say, we're all the same. We need to be treated the same. This is and that. And then eventually I was like, no, we're different. And we need to be, you know, we need to love our differences. So in the Trolls movie, King Quincy says, denying our differences is denying the truth of who we are. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, whoa. And it's true. What makes us different it's our experiences. Like I, I come from Mexico. Like I, I came here, like I spoke no English. We adopted two black kids. It's like super different. Like for me as a parent and racing, you know, by culture is it's all different. And we need to love the fact that we're all different and our experiences make us who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think what's important is Flipgrid allows our students to identify those differences and it allows not only me as an educator to sort of swim around in those differences with my students, but allows the other students to sort of use those differences as a point of exploration, right? So like I'm in Nebraska, like we're fairly racially homogenous, um, but because of Flipgrid, I can talk about my Indian culture. I can talk about my dual culture wedding. I could talk about all of these things and, and give that to my students as a space to explore that goes beyond the couple of times I mentioned in class because I, because there's a Flipgrid video. So now when they go back and watch that video, they can say, huh, I wonder what that is. And they can swim in those differences and really sort of, no pun intended here, immerse themselves in those differences um, and, and therefore gain a broader perspective about the world. So that brings us to question number two. Um, how do we really view differences as strengths in our classroom? And how do you ensure um, students have diverse learning experiences? Well, I just, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go. I was just gonna jump in because it's kind of tying back to what Ramesha had said about, and what Manny with the trolls, which I love that quote. <laughs> and uh, it's, I think, highly intelligent to come up with a, a troll quote. Uh, quote there, but I'm thinking back to like sign language. So here we go, sign language and Flipgrid and the first time I heard Charlie. And I, with a Flipgrid, had asked um, for people to share in their own language, I'm a digital citizen. We actually made a video of it and I promised to get the link, I'm a digital citizen. Um, and it's spoken in your own language, but then with American Sign Language, it's different than how you would sign I am a digital citizen in Nigeria because they have their own sign language compared to Spain, um, and compared to the UK. And that part, I think, is the tremendous part. And to go back to what Ramesh had said about like tone, you miss tone if you can't hear. So the idea with those closed captions too, and the importance of adding alternative text so that everybody has access into um, what the tone is, not just the content of what we're saying, I think it's just so important. And so to, to realize and to build that community that says, oh, my voice does matter, whatever that voice is, how you bring your voice into that you know, conversation is so important. I was gonna add that I have been reading, how many of you have been reading Culturally Responsive, Teaching for the Brain? Love it. And one of the quotes that um, 
one of the quotes that I, um, I've heard from Ola Joseph is diversity is not about how we differ. Diversity is about embracing one another's uniqueness. So how are we, that Flipgrid all about me topic allows us to learn about that and embrace those differences. And then as educators, we can be very strategic in looking at our different students' cultures and connecting them to what we're teaching in language arts and in our core curriculum, allowing our students to connect what they know and their background experiences to the new learning is really going to help build their overall critical thinking skills as well as make that learning sticky. But we as educators, we have to be um, intentional at making those connections and in doing those practices and strategies. Um, and also in, in this in this book, I'm just telling you, I know a lot of people have been doing lots of readings over the summer and it has just been a, um, a mind shift for me. Culturally responsive teaching is really a mindset. It's not a list of strategies. It is really trying to make sure that our students, uh, we're bringing in those cultures, connecting it to new learning and allowing them to always access those critical thinking skills. And when students are able to see that their culture matters and that 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 they have value in that and that that teacher is respecting that, um, it helps to just really build the community as well as helps with their um, academic success. Absolutely, and you know, cultural differences as well as learning differences are our strengths, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm like super excited about like our new partnership with Made by Dyslexia. And they have a topic that talks about um, dyslexia is my superpower. So when students recognize the beauty in their differences, that they are strengths and that we recognize that as, as educators as well. And we learn that as we get to know students and watch their videos and, and see those strengths, we can bring out the best in our students. And I'll say at the, at the college level, one thing I try to do um, and I think this has to do a lot with the fact that I'm dealing with like 18 to 21 year olds. And I know that's not strictly a college demographic, but broadly speaking, it is. Um, I try to do a lot of assumption identifying because at that age of 18 to 20, we can have a bit more of a nuanced discussion around what assumptions are you making about the people around you? And how do we identify those assumptions? How, and what, which assumptions are actually building a barrier to connecting with the other members, the other student members of that community. Um, and I, you know, I'm a biology professor. And so I often, like I said, when I run two truths and a lie, I often ask my students, many of them pick the two tattoo thing. And I said, well, why, why did you pick the two tattoo thing as my lie? And they said, well, you're, you're a scientist. Okay, so what assumptions are you making about being a scientist that precludes a scientist from doing this thing? And, and what's great, is once those assumptions are identified, then they're out in the open, and then they can be then they, those assumptions can be broken, and they can be they can sort of be broken down and destroyed, and and the, again, it's going to allow for stronger, deeper connections. And that's what one thing at the I think I don't want to say it's unique to the college level, but when you're at that age, really identifying those assumptions is, is important. It might be easier to do that than with like let's say a fifth grader, right? Um, just based cognitively. Absolutely. That's so true. Like when, when I came to this country, I, I was 20 and I was have to immerse into this culture. And it was lucky for me, I didn't have any of those perceptions because in, in Mexico, they're like socially, we're all, like, we're all the same. We all have the same culture, same religion is just the one. Well, for the most part. So when you come here, I'm like, I treat everybody the same because I'm thinking everybody's just like me. And it is not true. I had to like learn through others that people put all these barriers. I'm like, why do you do that? Right. <laughs> so right. I'm always like happy go lucky to everybody. And I'm just like, nope, that is I'm not learning that. And this mm -hmm. and for students, when because I taught the littles, I tell them that you need to value where you come from. Your culture is important. Just because you're being raised in this new culture, that does not mean that where you come from is not important. Like having uh Biculturalism, which is what my dad always says, like you got to be bicultural, not just you know renounce where you come from. It's 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 very important for the identity mm -hmm. and to honor what you know what the parents are working for. It's uh, it's, it's awesome to see it in little kids. And and those identities, I think, are really important to integrate, right? Because this is really more about integrating uh, all those different, all those unique cultural experiences and uh, unique backgrounds, as opposed to um, 
you know, assimilation, right? Because you don't want to homogenize and, and therefore like eliminate those differences. You want to say, I bring this to the table, I bring this to the table. How do these pieces fit together to sort of add more than, I, I always get this wrong, right? The sum is greater than the, the total is greater than the sum of its parts, something like that, right? And that's all about integration as opposed to assimilating. And that's what I think Flipgrid allows for because you can see everybody's, I mean, even in something like what's the, what's, how do they decorate their selfie, right? You immediately start to see unique identities showing up there from di from as soon as you enter the, the group, as I should call them now, because of the updates. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so I think that's really an important point about understanding to build a community is about integrating those unique experiences rather than assimilating them into a single new experience. And you know, Manny, um, just to add, my takeaway from what you were saying is that it's so important for our students to see us too, our educators. They need to see their teachers and their cultures. So I have a teacher that actually has the students compare and contrast their culture against her culture. So she's allowing them to see what's the same and what's different and yeah. building that community as they're seeing themselves related to her. And I thought that was pretty powerful as well. And being able to respond and flip rate and share those with each other um, really adds to that engagement and just, again, building that community within her class. So true. It was easier for me because it was the same culture and religion, well, not culture, but <clears throat> language with parents. I'm like, oh, trust me, I didn't speak the language like three years ago and I still struggle. Sometimes you'll see me a little. So I relate with the parents and the students and there was that immediate connection because we were facing the same thing. Like, trust me, I know exactly how you feel. I was totally independent over there and now here, I, it's like I could not express myself because I didn't know how. And with Flipgrid, I'm like, I can I can say it in broken English, but I can get my message across and that is all you need. <laughs> You know, we started our conversation with the importance of community, um, which is really formed by recognizing those cultural differences. Um, so as many schools are gearing up to begin their school year, or maybe they're continuing a, a year of learning, um, I would love for us to explore some ideas for action. So Manny, kick us off with our last and final question. So what advice would you give others to ensure that the culture is recognized and celebrating celebrated in their learning communities? Well, I know that in our district, um, we have many of our, I know our librarian has, our head librarian has made sure to offer more diverse books um, in, in curriculum. So now our, our teachers will have an opportunity to bring in more content so that our students are able to see themselves in books, nonfiction books, so that they can see themselves in areas of greatness, not just in an area where it looks negative for them, making sure that they're not stereotyped and that it's, it's a positive um, showing of their culture. Um, also, having those um, cultural days, we've had uh, schools, um, there's a school in our district that has a heritage day where the parents are actually able to come in and share their cultures, the students share their cultures, they celebrate it together, they have picnics with each other. So just really being able to build in and bring diverse voices into that classroom, as well as uh, Thomas Murray has um, Future Ready, they have created um, images that are free for teachers to use. So you can grab those images and put those in your newsletters, put those in your messages to parents so that students can see it, put it in your slideshows so students can see themselves in that content area as well. Um, one thing I do, and this is going to sound like gross self-promotion, but I really believe in the project, um, is the Thousand STEM Women project that Manny mentioned at the beginning. Um, for me, the reason I'm an ecologist is because I saw another brown ecologist. Um, I had never thought ecology was a thing that I could do as, a, as, as an Indian person until I met this professor from Sri Lanka. And so representation, as you were highlighting, Irie, is really, really critical. And so the Thousand STEM Women Project the series of Flipgrid videos, totally free, obviously available to any classroom that has sci female scientists of various backgrounds describing their specific type of science. So they're not just a biologist, they are a, a marine geomorphologist and or they are a cosmetic chemist or they are, and what that does is it not only provides an image for a student to say, I can 
do that. That's a thing that I didn't know existed, but it provides a level of granularity that says, oh, I didn't know that's a thing. And here's an endpoint. It becomes a tangible mm -hmm. endpoint. And so, you know, that project came out of my own experience until I met another brown ecologist. I didn't know that that could happen. So that's just a plug for my project. The link will be somewhere. We'll put it somewhere. We'll and, put it uh, down yeah. here in a yeah, second. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. If I could add, if there was only one thing I would suggest, regardless of what grade you teach or what your content is, um, there's an incredible organization out of Toronto called Cyber Seniors. And um, I've just been fortunate enough to work with Michael Dresick, a shout out for Michael Dresick right now. Michael, His district, he's great. Yeah, in um, upstate New York in Lakeshore. And we really haven't embraced a community approach to digital citizenship, that learning isn't just what happens, building community isn't just what happens in the classroom with the teacher and the students, but that it involves the parents and the outside community. So adding layers to your community to invite them to learn with you, instead of having an assembly, which I know assemblies really are not gonna happen in, in 2020 um, or 2021, I don't think, but so that's good, that's a good thing. So no one's gonna be talking at you, but how do we build an opportunity to learn with? And so we added layers to learn with industry, to learn with our outside community, including seniors. And so pre-COVID, I can tell you, inspired by this Cyber Seniors Program in Toronto, we took that and we went to a senior center and we taught um, fourth graders taught the seniors how to use Flipgrid. And I can tell you that the seniors were so excited because they were like, we want to do something more than just playing games on our phones. Like we need a purpose every day when we, and everybody, regardless of your age, how old or young you are, we all need a purpose to get up in the morning, to know Ooh. that what we are, what we have to give, to contribute really does matter. So I think building community, forget content in the beginning, of your school year really work on not just with your students bring in the parents bring in the outside community and these cyber seniors if you ever needed volunteer hours you could do volunteer hours through them um, and and get a certificate and they have it incredible like how to learn to do banking online, grocery shopping, how to download music, like all important things that our young people could take the lead okay. to learn alongside our seniors. I mean, that would oh, be my, okay. my advice for any school community, no matter where you are, um, to keep on adding layers to your community. I'm stealing that idea as well. I'm just stealing <laughs> ideas from everyone. I love it. It's, you know what? it's been such a phenomenal conversation and we don't want to end the conversation. So I know everyone's Twitter handles are on the screen. We invite all of you who are watching to hop over to Twitter. We have a question for you for this week. It is how do you foster a sense of community and celebrate diversity and inclusion in your learning environment? So we would love to hear from you and also learn from you. And check us out tomorrow as we take a first look at the new Flipgrid and also join us again on Friday for another day of educator innovation. Yay. Let's go Thank out and you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.